Hello again. I'm sure that many people have noticed vaguely that certain jobs in this country seem to be undertaken solely by people with foreign accents. The baristas in the coffee shop, the guy who delivers your takeaway pizza, minicab drivers, care home workers, cleaners, that kind of thing. Why do we never seem to see ordinary English people doing such work? Is it because they reject such jobs as being beneath them? Are they work shy? Why is it that only foreign immigrants seem to have employment of this kind? The answer is uh, that whereas most people born in this country have to have a national insurance number, passport and so on if they wish to work, that is to say the employer must comply with all the relevant legislation, there are many companies which are prepared to play fast and loose with the law so that they can pay workers less and avoid various expenses connected with having legitimate employees. I spoke this morning about international students, of whom there are at any one time well over half a million in this country. All these people are legally permitted to work up to 20 hours a week while they are in prison. Many of them cut classes and work far more than 20 hours a week. They already have a basic income often including accommodation which is provided sometimes through grants from their home country and so on or from their families. They often want more money though and working one or two part-time jobs is the way to get it. What this means is that if a British person wants to work full-time and be paid enough to live on he or she might not be able to compete in a work in a field which is essentially geared around people who are happy to work 20 hours here and there, very often off the books. The British person will wish to make sure that national insurance contributions being made so that at a later stage he or she will be eligible for social security benefits. That's what it's like when you actually live in a country full time. A lot of employers don't want to get involved in too much paperwork of this kind. After all, as long as an employee earns less than £190 a week, then national insurance doesn't even have to be paid. All these little loopholes are ruthlessly exploited both by those who have a franchise, say, from some big chain of coffee shops, or the people working for them. The average British teenager leaving school simply cannot compete in this market, because he or she won't even know where to begin. In the description to this video, I give a link to a frightful woman called Tetra Esther, who is certainly Nigerian and possibly a lawyer. She runs a YouTube channel devoted to helping foreigners stay in Britain and undertake what she describes as side hustles. She is also, it seems, an immigration advisor. Watching the video is very instructive. It's called Make Extra Thousand Pound a Month Seven Side Hustles Guaranteed to Pay a Thousand Pound per Month in the UK. She advises people, for example, if they have a car and a driving license, then they should set up as private taxi drivers. No mention of insurance, national insurance payments, DBL checks, or any other tiresome formalities of that kind. She simply suggests that people just get stuck in straight away. Then there's cooking African food for parties and weddings. Once more, no questions about health and hygiene requirements, paying tax or anything of that kind. I really do not recommend watching this video if you suffer from high blood pressure because you're likely to have a seizure. So casually does this woman talk of working off the books with no mention of tax, national insurance or anything else. It is not just foreign students engaging in the work, this world of um, black market labour. Many immigrants are also prepared to work for much less than indigenous British people. Let's face it, if you're an asylum seeker being put up in a hotel and getting all your food for free and not being required to pay electricity bills and rent like the rest of us, Slipping out for a bit each day and working as cleaners or taxi drivers is a good way to bring in a little money. 
As I said, in many fields these days, it is almost unbelievably rare to encounter a white British employee. The black economy is geared to the needs of foreigners, and they find it far easier to manipulate the system than those born in this country who have lived here all their lives. Fifty years ago, it was very easy for a British person to find unskilled work. Sometimes you could just walk into a factory and find that they had vacancies and you might be able to start the next day. Now that's all finished. Those who did not go to university find it all but impossible to find simple jobs anymore. And the reason is that immigration has provided a new and inexhaustible supply of unskilled labour. An increasing number too of those organising jobs are foreign and tend to favour their fellow countrymen. Uh, think Pakistani cab drivers, for instance. A quick look around YouTube will soon throw up many channels which are devoted solely to instructing immigrants in this country how to work the system to their advantage. No wonder young British people find it hard to compete.